Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 52. Ideal gases versus real gases, which we addressed a little bit in our lab today. Oops. Um, pressure flow, effusion and diffusion, collecting gas water, this is a gas, these, this is lab number one, this is lab number two, and density of a gas, that's more calculation. So ideal versus real gas is where we'll start off with. So hopefully my slide will. As much as we wish gases were ideal, they are actually real. Remember we said ideal, um, or ideal is the Disney princess, and then there is my real, but really, really, really close to the ideal things. So remember, um, ideal gases uh, have no volume for the points. Whoops, I misspelled volume. They have no attractions. They're hot, so they move. Uh, no, that's what I meant to do. Um, they have no volume. They have no attractions, um, and they have the collisions. And real gases have problems to be what? That now to be most ideal, like my is most ideal. Instead of no volume, they will be small particles. So, sorry, that's hard to read. Small particles. For example, H2O would be more ideal than C6H12O6 because it's smaller. Um, they will have, they will not be attractive. Remember, they have no friends, so unattractive. So H bonding would be bad, and then only having dipole dipole, or only having sorry, only having less dispersion forces would be good. They'd have, remember, they always live in a big old house, and they would have the low pressure. Good. Flows from high to low. Hope this will change. So if I have, the next slide is hopefully up soon. Um, pressure flows from high to low. So if I have high pressure in Mr. Peanut, and low pressure in the air outside of it, Mr. Butt is going to deflate, right? So if I put a hole in it, he will deflate. And then in all the movie things, when you um, shoot a plane, all of the air rushes out plane because airplanes have high pressure inside and at high atmospheres, or high, I'm sorry, high altitude, that equals very low pressure. So in movies, when they shoot a gun inside of an airplane, they create a hole in all of the air on the inside, so the airplane is pressurized. So the airplane is pressurized, so if they pull in it, all the air flies out, and then you know everything goes shooting out of there, and a chair blocks it, or whatever it is, or something like that happens. So pressure always flows from high to low. Effusion versus diffusion. So airframe is going to be either diffusion or effusion. Think diff diffuses. So diffusion is just spreading out. Pinholes cause effusion. And because, let's see, so pinholes cause effusion, which is just fusion, through a hole. The for that is rate 1 over rate 2 equals the square root of molar mass 2 over molar mass 1. Notice how these are inverses of each other. So what I mean is rate 1, molar mass 1, and then the opposite sides, 2, molar mass 2, opposite sides. So they're diagonal to each other. So as they spread faster gases, small gases would move faster. Come on. If CH4 diffuses at a rate of 0.137 grams per minute, how fast should it diffuse? So here we go. Rate 1 over rate, let's call it rate CH4, over rate O2 equals square root of molar mass of oxygen over molar mass CH4. So the rate of CH4 is 0.137 equals R equals the square root of molar mass of oxygen is 32 over molar mass of meth, which is 16, one carbon plus four oxygens. See if I have a calculator that works here. 
and I am looking. Ah, here we go. So I'm 32 over 62, square root of 2. So second root 2 equals 1.41. So that means 1.41 r equals 0.137. Note that this out of the denominator right away. So 32 16 is 2, so the square root of 2 is 1.41. So then r equals 0.137 divided by 1.41. And it is 0 0.0972 grams per minute. Does this make sense? Should oxygen go slower than methane? Yes. It should go slower, and it weighs more. Would helium use faster or slower than CH4? Helium is HE, which if I go to the periodic table, weighs 2 grams, but it would use faster. All right, density of a gas at STP. Hopefully that's um, at STP. Uh, my pressure is one and all that. So density is a constant for us, um, and density equals love. Uh, finally, a fluorine gas and a vergon gas. So density is constant for us, so that means it doesn't change. Density equals love, which is mass over volume. So if I'm trying to find if it's constant, that means I can choose to do one mole. So if you have fluorine gas, that means I can find the mass of 1 over the volume of 1. So the mass of fluorine would be F2, or fluorine diatomic, equals 19 times 2, which would be 30.0, over what is the volume of 1 mole of a gas? 22.4. Right, so this is my mass. This is my volume. Well, there we go. 38 over 22.4 is 1.70 per liter. Of argon gas, I look at the table and argon weighs 39.95 over 22.4. 39.95 divided by 22.4 is 1.78. I can also do, remember, density equals PMM or RT, which is a derivation of PV equals NRT. So if not, this is if I'm in, not at STP. All right, tomorrow, Wednesday, we have a lab. Yay. A real lab without computers. Yay. Um, and PV equals mass RT over molar mass. So in this first one, I'm going to have a flask. This is a flame. This is a beaker of boiling water. And what I'm trying to do is find the molar mass of a gas, of a volatile liquid. So this thermometer is in the water. And the temperature of boiling water is around 100 degrees Celsius. So the pressure, this has a pinhole in it. This is hard to read, but it's a pinhole. So I've got a flask, and I've got aluminum foil over it with a pinhole in it. So if there's a hole in it, that means the pressure in equals the pressure out. So we can get the pressure from this from weather.com is where we get it from. The volume is the volume of the flask. Now the volume of the flask is not too, it says 50 or it says 125. It's not because that is marking pay up it. You need to fill it full of water. and then use a graduated cylinder to figure out how much the extra space is. The mass is going to, we're going to weigh it after we heat it. R is a constant, T is the temperature, and the only variable left. So that's all we're going to do. So we're going to put in about five drops of a volatile liquid. Put it in boiling water until it um, evaporates, and then we're going to take it out, let it cool. Um, so five drops, it's going to evaporate, and then we're going to cool it, which just take it out of the boiling water, and it's going to be less of it, and then weigh it. And that's basically it. The other lab we're going to do, which for some reason I think we're doing this one first, I can't remember. Uh oh, here comes another cough. <coughs> 
Come on, give me my other lab. Second lab, we're going to react a metal with acid to create hydrogen gas. So we're going to collect this gas over water and do PV equals NRT, and don't forget to subtract water. So we're going to have a UDM, and we're going to drop in a piece of magnesium, the acid on the bottom, and we're going to cap it off. We're going to turn it upside down. What's going to happen is the acid is going to react with the magnesium, and acids plus metals make gas. So this is going to form, and we've got this giant um, graduated cylinder we're going to put it in, and we're going to make sure that the, see how this is a water level right here? We're going to equalize it with this one right here. Structures are going to be the same. And that's it. Only that pressure that we get is going to be the pressure of hydrogen and the pressure of water. So that's it. And then the pressure, obviously the pressure inside and outside should be the same. So hopefully this last slide will go and we can get out of here in under 12 minutes. Come on, slide. Review. We pretend all gases are ideal. We don't pretend they're real. Pretend they are ideal. Um, gas flows from high to low pressure. Effusion is diffusion through a hole. Density is love of a mole. And labs are fun. And I will see you tomorrow. Woo.